in developmental genetics, an initial gene is going to be transcribed and translated into transcriptional factors that can either activate or repress the next gene from being transcribed and translated, in which its product will repeat the same process with the next gene, and so on and so forth. So after you keep activating or repressing further gene expression sequentially, you eventually get your final phenotype. So you can see why if you disturb one of these genes through a mutation in this orderly process, this can cause sort of a chain reaction, ultimately changing the final phenotype in the end. So in this video, we can use an analogy to describe this process using the sport Quidditch in Harry Potter. So in this game, it doesn't matter what the score is or how many days go by playing a single match. The game can only win end if this little ball called the golden snitch is caught in the air by the seeker. So obviously there is strategy in catching the snitch. You'd only want to catch it if your team has enough points to begin with, so that when the game ends, your team can win. So how does a team even get these points to begin with? Via a chaser, um, throwing a ball called the quaffle successfully through a goal, which leads to more pressure of wanting to catch the snitch and win the game. So the quaffle in this case serves as the activator and the seeker catching the snitch and winning the game is what is being transcribed. But if any player gets hit with a ball called the bludger from the opposing team's beater, that initial team gets closer to losing because they are not able to score enough points to win. So the bludger is acting like the repressor. So using this analogy, let's look at a hypothetical match in Harry's sixth year to see what our developmental network would look like. So Gryffindor beater Richie hits the bludger at Slytherin beater Crab, who is trying to hit another bludger at Gryffindor chaser Katie. Katie, free to travel now, passes the quaffle to fellow Gryffindor chaser Ginny, who scores as soon as she gets the ball. So this allows Gryffindor to have enough points so Gryffindor seeker Harry can confidently grab the snitch and win the game. So the gene Richie represses the transcription of the gene Crab, which usually represses the transcription of the gene Katie, which activates transcription of the gene Ginny, which activates the transcription of the gene Harry. So the wild type phenotype is Gryffindor winning the game because Harry caught the snitch. But what happens if there's a single mutant in one of these genes such that Richie is not there to hit the bludger at Crab? So that means there is nothing inhibiting the expression of the gene Crab, so Crab is free to keep hitting more bludgers at Katie, or in other words, repress gene Katie's expression, preventing Katie from activating the expression of gene Ginny, which prevents the activation of gene Harry's expression too, and Gryffindor loses because the snitch was not caught in time. What about a double mutant such that Crab and Ginny are both not playing in that match? So while it is true that the gene Crab will not be there to repress the gene Katie's expression, this doesn't matter anyways, because if the gene Ginny is not there to begin with, the gene Harry's expression will not be activated. So Gryffindor will lose a game anyways in this example too. So here are my references and thank you.